All right, well, he uh, takes a moment to get set up. Uh, Dr. Matthew Ballastent. Yes. That's enough? Okay. That's uh, works for Onera. He's been collaborating with Dr. Loic Breval, uh, who unfortunately couldn't be here with us today. They've been using OpenMDO for the design of launch vehicles. You got a teaser in the last talk, uh, including specifically trajectory optimization applications, which is a subset of like optimal control. Uh, a little bit of a funny story. Loic, to kind of jumpstart some of this work, actually came to visit NASA Glenn to learn a little bit more about Dimos. He came for a week in December of 2018. Those of us who work for the government will remember December of 2018 as a uh, unexpected vacation. <laughs> um, but we made it work. Uh, Loic and myself and Rob uh, found some time outside of NASA to, to work on that. And, and I guess we're going to get to see what came from that initial work. Okay. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm Mathieu Belledon. I'm a research engineer at ONERA. And uh, the aim of this talk is uh, to give you some illustration of uh, how we use OpenMDO at ONERA for reusable launch vehicle design study. So we use OpenMDO for this study at the conceptual level, okay? Not using very high fidelity model. Uh, as an introduction, a few words about research on OpenMDO and use of OpenMDO at ONERA. So at ONERA, we perform several um, MDO research. Uh, we try to address numerical optimization, the numerical method in order to improve the design space exploration mainly at the conceptual level, okay, using low or medium fidelity model. So we work on MDO formulations, optimization algorithm, surrogate modeling, you had an overview with the presentation of Joseph before, and UQ, and also multi-fidelity modeling. And our MDO research is mainly driven by application. So we build several complex processes implemented in OpenMDO for several uh, range of aerospace vehicles, such as missile, aircraft, or launches. And this design process often involves multi-fidelity modeling. Okay. And also, we collaborate uh, with the different departments of ONERA, with structure, propulsion, aerodynamics, but also with different schools and research institutes in France, in Europe, and in the US. And concerning the framework issue, for us, um, a shared framework is really mandatory in order to uh, be able to collaborate and to capitalize our developments. And we used uh, OpenMDO from the beginning, from the zero version. <clears throat> so uh, let's talk about our roadmap. So as I said before, we tried to, de to develop design methods to evaluate the performance of integrated concept, aerospace vehicle, and we try also to capitalize this design method into a shared framework. So in this context, in this context, for, sorry, uh, OpenMDO for the design method is a support for us to test our methodological development. We implement a lot of test cases using OpenMDO, and it enables us to test and to validate our design methodology. <clears throat> we also use uh, OpenMDO as a primary tool in order to integrate our model and our discipline into a, a single process uh, capitalization framework. And OpenMDO is also the native integration framework for the development of web application. Uh, for MDO collaboration. I'll give you a, a few words about that just after. And we also use OpenMDO in order to integrate uh, all of our design processes for a large range of kind of vehicles, for aircraft, in order to test new technologies such as the blending wing body or in launch vehicle study. And the, the talk of today will be only focused on the launcher study. And we're very happy to be here and to uh, collaborate on new features. Thank you, Justin, for the invitation. So <clears throat> as I said before, the, the talk will be focused on uh, several illustrations about launch vehicle design process. OK, so when we have to design a new reusable launch vehicle, we have to make a lot of conceptual choices. We have to select the return propulsion mode, either using the classical rocket engine of the launch vehicle, but we can also imagine other kind of configuration with using alternative propulsion, such as everything, which, which we also have to select the, tra the return trajectory type, so toss back or gliding or flyback configuration. We have to uh, design the aerodynamical configuration to choose the real strategy the tr to define the structural configuration. So as you can see, there are a lot of conceptual choices we have to make. 
and at Onera, uh, at the conceptual level, we try to explore a large combinatorial of these possible solutions in order to find the most appropriate configuration of launch, reusable launcher design. And as I said before, we use uh, low fidelity to medium fidelity model. Okay, so <clears throat> here you have uh, three uh, illustrations of possible RV. The first is a toss-back solution uh, promoted by Falcon 9 of SpaceX. You always know this solution use, that uses the main propulsion in order to, to perform the return strategy, but you can also imagine other solutions by providing the main core with aeronautics technology, such as the, oh, sorry about that, the glider or the flyback solution we here that returns to the landing site using four turbojet located in the nose. Okay, so at Onera we explore such kind of uh, reusable launch vehicle configuration. <clears throat> so especially last year, in collaboration with the French space agency CNES, we explore, we are interested in exploring alternative configuration to tossback architecture. So that was been that has been done in several projects funded both by Onera and by the French Space Agency. And today, I will talk about this kind of solution, uh, which is a glide back solution, okay? It is a classical uh, launch vehicle stage, but with uh, additional lifting surface. Okay, <clears throat> why, uh, why this solution? So, uh, as you may know, the task back solution of SpaceX, the Falcon 9, use additional propellant in order to return to the launch site using boost back burn, which is uh, which uh, requires a large amount of propellant masses. And this propellant masses has to be uh, embedded in the, in the launch vehicle in the ascent phase and is a mass penalty for the performance of the launch vehicle during the ascent phase, okay? And by uh, using glide back and aerodynamic surfaces, we try to limit at the minimum this amount of propellant required for giving the, the first stage the rocket impulsion in order to go back to the launch site. Okay, so this is the main advantage of such, such solutions. So uh, <coughs> this kind of architecture uh, perform a classical ascent phase, uh, which, which, which is quite analog to expandable launch vehicle. Once the second stage is separated, the vehicle is turned around, and then we have um, a small rocket engine boost in, in order to cancel the tangential velocity and give a very short impulse to the landing side, and all the mission, the return mission, is performed using uh, aerodynamic forces. So we have an aerodynamical pull-up maneuver and a glider phase. Oh, so the kind, this kind of uh, launch vehicle returns horizontally to the launch site. That can be advantageous for safety aspect or visibility aspects. Okay? So <clears throat> with CNES, so we, uh, we looked at uh, that what we call the design of a reusability kit for launch vehicle design. So a reusability kit is a set of elements that can be mounted on the classical uh, stage, first stage of launch vehicle <laughs> in order to provide it with reusability capability. So it is composed of additional lifting surfaces, including wings, and kernels, gears, interstage, and so on. So he, and here the philosophy is to be able to use a first stage in both reusable or expandable mode, okay? So here you have the stage with, in black, the elements of the, the bridge kit. So in the first uh, missions of the stage, we mount the reusability kit on the, on the stage and we perform reusable flight. And for the light flight, we unmount the, the reusability kit and the launch vehicle perform an expandable flight. Okay, so in order to design such kind of vehicle, we have to model all the disciplines required in the design process. So the propulsion, trajectory, structure, geometry, and aerodynamics. I recall that we are in the very uh, early stage design. So we have to explore a large design space. And so for the different disciplines, we use either open source, either in-house codes legacy codes. So our codes are mainly legacy codes, so the gradients are often not provided for the moment, but our biggest wish is, is to uh, provide these codes with derivative. And for several disciplines, 
for example, aerodynamics, we implement some multi-fidelity uh, strategy in order to aggregate different fidelity from uh, semi-empirical such as analog uh, missile.com to SHABP-like uh, method which use uh, Newtonian tech calculations to uh, CFD calculation. Okay, so the way we use OpenMDO in this study is uh, to integrate and couple all the different disciplines that are required in the design process. So all the different disciplines are uh, coupled into uh, an MDO process and then we connect this MDO process depending on the study we have to do to different open source or in-house library. For example, for deterministic MDO for mixed variables, we connect it with CMA ES or DEEP. For sensitivity analysis or uh, MDO under uncertainty, we connect it with uh, open terms, which is a, a library in Python that is very um, interesting for uh, propagating uncertainty. When we have to do multi-fidelity or surrogate modeling, we connect it with GPFlow or MUKit or Scikit-learn or SMT. It depends on the study we have to do. Okay, now uh, just a few words, uh, example of integration of discipline into OpenMDO. For, for example, for the geometry discipline, we've wrapped in OpenMDO a parameterized, a parameterized version of OpenVSP that allows us for uh, at the system level to modify the design variables, so the mass of propellant, the length, the diameter of the stage, and directly to have a consistent geometry, consistent CAD geometry using OpenVSP or FreeCAD. And it allows also us to generate surface mesh that are interesting in the trajectory analysis. Okay, so this, this uh, and all the, uh, these disciplines are directly wrapped into a pan MDO. So, in order to uh, to ease the implementation of MDO process uh, at Onera for the engineer system engineer, as uh, Joseph said before, we developed a web application, which is called WhatsApp, developed by Remy. And uh, it allows us to have um, in a web interface uh, a kind of uh, graphic interface for the engineer to define uh, the, their design program, the design variables, uh, the objective functions, the constraints, the, and the different disciplines to connect them. And then it allows us uh, allow as well to export uh, from this graphical interface, the OpenMDO code. That is the Python code. And then the engineer have to just complete the compute function of OpenMDO. Okay, so if you're interested in this kind of uh, web application, here is the link on GitHub. Okay, so let's go back to the reusable launch vehicle analysis. So for the reusability kit, we try to identify the most promising Reusability kit, uh, aerodynamic configuration of reusability kit. So we compare different uh, airflow profile. We try to optimize the plant form with different airflow profile. <clears throat> and to do so, we had to explore a large design space, so using low fidelity model, but we also have to be accurate enough in order to have the right trade-off between different configurations. To do so, we use multi-fidelity multi um, methods using SMT in order to train a co-rigging model to aggregate different fidelities. So we perform dozens of CFD calculations for different flight conditions in terms of Mach number and angle of attack, and we aggregate uh, different fidelity and integrate it directly into, uh, into the aerodynamic discipline wrapped in OpenMDO. And we use this meta model in, in MDO for the performance evaluation. So here you have several examples of the results we, we had for different kind of profiles. So here you have the return trajectories, different simulated parametric analysis of the return trajectory. And that allows us to find different uh, aerodynamic configuration for the reusability res kit. Okay, uh, another, another project we had last year uh, is uh, how to find optimal configuration of run vehicle for different missions. So how to find optimal configuration of launch vehicle when it has to be uh, uh, to, to perform expandable and reusable mission. So here, the philosophy is to use the main core in the first flight for the reusable mission with the uh, reusability kit mounted on the core. And for the last mission, we unmount the reusability kit. We had boosters on the, on the main stage and we perform a fully expandable stage, expandable mission. 
So here, uh, this is clearly a multi-objective MGO problem because we have two objectives to, uh, to, to optimize. For the reusable mission, we have here to minimize uh, the gross lift-off weight of the launch vehicle given a, a, pay, a payload. And we have also an, expan uh, an expandable mission given a glow, how to maximize the payload mass. Okay, so the main question here are which MDO formulation to use for design such kind of uh, problem of vehicle, how to integrate into OpenMDO uh, a process in which several disciplines are, are common between the two configurations and other are not, and also which algorithm is the best to use. Okay, so concerning the, the design process. So here you have the, the basic view of the design process. So here you have the, the two configurations, reusable and expandable. As you can see, these configurations uh, share several disciplines. Uh, other disciplines are not. And these configurations are coupled together with respect to the trajectory load undertaken by the first stage during the reusable or expandable ascent phase. OK, so here you have a, a, a single level coupled multi-mission formulation using an MDA, which is quite expensive because we have repeated calls to the discipline. So we try to decouple this uh, design process by removing the feedback coupling variables uh, with respect to the trajectory load and let them uh, handled by the multi-objective optimizer. So we propose this single level decoupled multi-mission, but the issue is the trajectory constraint feasibility, which is quite tricky for the, especially for the return mission. Okay, so in order to facilitate the convergence of the different of the optimization process, we propose a multi-level decoupled MDO formulation. So each configuration is optimized separately, and we had on top of that a multi-objective optimizer in order to coordinate the two uh, sub-optimization. Okay, and because uh, the optimization at the subsystem level uh, is quite computationally expensive. We choose as a multi-objective optimizer to use uh, a, uh, a derivation of efficient global optimization, so using surrogate-based optimization. So Joseph already uh, present ego. So uh, just a few words about multi-objective ego. So we, pr we replace the classical expected improvement criterion used as an infill criterion uh, to put new points into the current design of experiment by a multi-objective one using expected hyper-volume improvement. Basically, the point that will be added into the current DOE is the point that the best improves the Pareto front between the different objectives. Okay. Yeah, you can see here. So in order to integrate uh, it into OpenMDO, so we we have two OpenMDO process for expandable configuration and reusable configuration. And on top of that, we uh, connect these two OpenMDO process with a Bayesian multi-objective optimizer using GPI. Well, here you have some results of the optimization uh, problem. So the high problem here, you have the convergence rate of our method in orange compared to the classical uh, evolutionary B objective particle swarm algorithm. And here you have the Pareto front in red. And here you have two extremal points of the Pareto front. Here, one, the one that minimizes the glow, the one that maximizes the payload. And here you have the corresponding ascent and return trajectory. <laughs> okay, so, <clears throat> and as a final example, I'd like to share uh, with you, we also have several projects in order to study completely alternative solution using a uh, new kind of engine, uh, air breathing hypersonic engine for the ascent phase. So this was a, a joint project with the French Space Agency, the UK Space Agency, and Reaction Engine. Reaction Engine is a company that promotes a new kind of uh, engine, hypersonic engine, which is able to fly in both everything and rocket mode, which is called the Sabre Engine for the Energetic Everything Rocket Engine. So basically, from Mach 0 to Mach 5, this kind of engine is able to fly uh, in the everything mode with a very high ISP of about uh, 4,000 seconds. And from Mach 5 to Mach 20, uh, th uh, the engine is switched into a rocket mode using uh, liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen uh, propellant and perform the, the rest of the, the flight using uh, like a rocket. Okay, so we try uh, with CNES, UXA, and reaction engine to uh, find 
to, to design appropriate configuration to use this kind of propulsion for two-stage, two-orbit uh, architecture. So we try to analyze different kind of uh, aerodynamic configuration for such kind of vehicle. Here at the left, you have a, a, what we call the payload bay configuration in which the second stage is located inside the payload bay inside the first stage. And here you have another type of configuration which is called the in-front configuration in which the second stage is in front of the first stage. So we try to make trade-off between these kind of configurations. And to do so, uh, the main challenge we had to, to face is uh, how to have an aerodynamic assessment which is quite accurate for the whole domain of flight of this kind of vehicle. So from Mach 0 to Mach 5 in everything mode, from, from Mach 5 to Mach 20 in uh, rocket mode, then we have a re-entry with high angle of attack, then a return to launch site mission using everything mode. So we have a lot of flight conditions. So we developed a specific aerodynamic assessment code using Newtonian method and code with Euler CFD calculations, and we plugged in into OpenMDO and use it directly uh, in the optimization process. And that allows us to make trade-off. So here you have different kind of ascent area and a return trajectory for different staging velocity, and here different configuration, different gross lift of weight of different configuration we we design. So to, to conclude my presentation, so Onera so is using OpenMDO for RLV study for a long time, but combined with in-house and open source library. So for us, OpenMDO facilitates the discipline integration and the handling of coupling between the different disciplines, and also enables to perform integrated MDAO with more flexibility than commercial alternatives. And our main perspective are to provide uh, all the disciplinary models with derivatives and use them directly to exploit the full capability of OpenMDO for the, the next project. So the first discipline we want to tackle is a trajectory analysis. And uh, for that, I am very enthusiastic about the, the tutorial of this afternoon by Rob in order to, to understand better the, the use of DIMOS. So uh, the OpenMDO launch vehicle for the expandable uh, architecture uh, design process is available on GitHub. You will have the link here. and the, also, WhatsApp is available on GitHub. And just as a concluding remarks, we also use OpenMDO at Onera for other aerospace vehicle study. So here you have a design process for a blending wing body, which is a huge, pro, a huge multi department uh, project, which involves uh, several hundreds of design variables at the, at the system level. And we also use OpenMDO to evaluate breakthrough technology for aircraft design. Here you have an example of distributed electrical propulsion. And for that, we use a, a code co-developed with uh, a SuperIO, which is called FAST, and which will be uh, available soon on open source. Thank you for your attention. The ego work and the multi-fidelity, that's gradient-free methods, right? Yeah. And so, so do you can and can be successful with gradient free methods in open MDA. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, WhatsApp has been mentioned a few times. I was lucky enough to catch uh, a presentation on WhatsApp at, I think, Aviation recently. Uh, let me just say all of the folks who uh, want to talk to me about GUIs for open MDA should instead talk to Remy. I think he has it much more figured out than I do. So. Um, What's up is really cool. You should check out the YouTube videos on it. Um, have you guys started using Dymos yet? No. No. Okay. Um, Rob, everybody is really looking forward to your tutorial. Yeah. No pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, has OpenMDO gotten in the way at all, or has it been mostly smooth sailing for you guys? Sorry? Has OpenMDO been difficult, or has it been... No, for Mostly us. Mostly smooth sailing? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. We have no difficulty, but we, we, we make with OpenMDO a Python function, and then we use other library to connect OpenMDO with uh, right. uh, other library. So I think that's actually easy. a really important design pattern for OpenMDO usage. Admittedly, we don't use it that way much ourselves, but that doesn't mean it shouldn't be used that way. Um, if you just need something that can connect up your models and provide potentially provide derivatives, potentially not, and then you want some complex process around that, OpenMDO has all the hopefully has all the API methods you need to 
write a Python script around OpenMDAO. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't always have to be, nor the, does it expect to be the top of the pile at all points in time. Uh, and there's a couple of places even in our own work where that has shown up. Uh, Graham mentioned um, like time dependent problems that are too big for Dimos. Uh, and recently with some work with Kevin Jacobson, we've added an API method that allows you to do um, like time dependent propagations of derivatives through OpenMDAO in a matrix free way. Uh, so I, I think that that's a design pattern that we'd like to encourage, um, even if we don't always use it ourselves. Uh, so the OpenMDAO problem class is kind of meant to be that wrapper, right? You put everything in and you get the problem. And then if you want to put a, a loop around the problem and not, you know, not use our drivers or you want to create and destroy problems on a regular basis, like Carolina was talking about, I, I think that's a perfectly valid use case of OpenMDAO. Sorry? Which, which versions of OpenMDO were you using? Uh, the, the, for, for all of this work, it was yeah. two? Okay. Yeah, it was all until like 2.5 and then. Right, but you, you have used earlier versions, right? Yeah, yeah, we use uh, OpenMDO 1 and 2. Okay. When we used the uh, zero version, <laughs> but yeah, we started with Open version 1. Where, where does the Agile framework fit into the overall picture that you talked about here? Uh, Agile? Uh, the Agile project? No, it's, it's not connected to the Agile project. Oh, it's not connected. The Agile project is for aeronaut, uh, aircraft. You dedicated to aircraft, and this is for that project. Yes. Um, have you considered trying to go to a, a single optimization for multi trajectories and having some essentially post processed? function to try to satisfy all of those trajectories like, a, like cost is always difficult to quantify but cost is always the one that makes the most sense to me because that's the one you know, ultimately that's that's what people are paying so yeah um have you considered at all how you how you might essentially optimize multiple trajectories with one trajectory at the end uh we already minimize the the the, the mass of the punctuation as of the system and we suppose that the cost is the expectation of the mass, but yeah, the cost model are quite tricky. But when you have like these two launch vehicles, then and for for the for the for the first the, the main the main mission was the reusable mode. So we have to minimize the project of white given a given a payload. Can you uh, stand it. behind the podium so that sorry, the internet can pick up yeah. your answer? Thanks. Given a payload, we minimize the mass, and then for the second project, we fix the glow. And we maximize the performance of the launch vehicle for this group. Okay. So one size. Yeah. I think uh, for the benefit of the internet viewers, the question was, have you considered looking at multi multiple trajectories with a single objective? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like a multi-point optimization. Mm -hmm. So you could simulate multiple different simultaneous trajectories with one aircraft and still minimize, or sorry, spacecraft. <laughs> yeah. um, and still minimize the mass. But it sounds like you treat one yeah, as your we, design mission. We, we, and then we try really to have antagonistic objectives, a maximization of payload in one side and minimization of the glow in the other side. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.